Okay. Uh, Samia, you had a question. Is ethanol a compound? Okay. And this is ethanol. Okay. These are <clears throat> hydrogens. Oftentimes, when you write a hydrocarbon, for instance, propane, those those dashes are meant to be bonds. And when there's nothing on the other side of the bonds, it's classically considered to be hydrogen. Okay. So this and these are hydrogens. Now, this is the active ingredient in drinking alcohol. Ethanol. It is a compound. It is a unique chemical structure, the least of which one unit has a specific boiling point of around 79, 80 degrees Celsius around. Uh, it has a melting point less than that of water, and uh, it's toxic to the human body. Why humans consume it, way beyond me, but it is a toxin. It kills cells and it's not healthy. But people use it all the time. And you know what? They come up with reasons to use it. But it's still, in terms of speaking as a scientist, as a chemist, not speaking about it socially, it is a toxin. No doubt about it. Okay, can I have the eraser, please? All right, now, what else is in chapter two? Anyone? Now, you're going to have a test on chapter two before you know it. Okay, oh no, test, oh no. What, what do you got? What do you got? Yeah, but that's like section 11, maybe something a little bit earlier in the chapter. Yeah. Like what? Models of matter. The practical theories. Like give me give me some give me some hints. Yeah, well who was like the first guy to come up with an idea of the particle theory? And he wasn't given much credit either. Robert Browning? Did you say Robert Browning? Robert Browning was a poet. Who is it? Democritus. Yeah, Democritus. Sir Robert something, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, it was Democritus. Democritus said he didn't know a lot about Adam. And he certainly, Samia, thank you very much for participating. You are a little chatterbox. I, I quite enjoy it, you know, usually, but, you know, you are a rebel rouser, you know. Talking about union meetings in class. And, he saw Poland yes. Okay. So <clears throat> it wasn't Robert Browning. Robert Browning was a poet. Yeah. Uh, Democritus was Greek. And he was a. Could someone look up Democritus and uh, Aristotle? Look up Democritus, Aristotle, and. The, the, the four elements. Just put, just put in four elements. Uh, Robina, will you help out there? You're like staring into space. Okay. Uh, Maisha, I know that you're just simply here by mistake and you, uh, you got off your bus to Tampa, Florida and you ended up in here, I know, but maybe you want to help us out because we really don't know a lot about chemistry. And I know that you have your, University degree in chemistry, so you can help us out, maybe. Okay. Is that a little too sar sarcastic? Yes. May, may I see that? May I see that? Okay. All right. These are the four elements. I, I know that I'm going a little crazy here talking about four elements when there's well over a hundred. But uh, oops, I lost something. Let's hit back. All right. Is it the end of class or something? No. It's only 8:47. Okay, let's see. Uh, something happened. Aristotle. All right, but we don't really want Aristotle. We want to know the four elements. Aristotle did not believe in atomic theory, and he taught so otherwise. Sure, we're talking about Browning motion. Yes, I understand that. A Browning motion. Oh, that's good. I like that. 
Okay, so the four elements, he proposed four elements, but it really wasn't his idea. I just can't remember the name of the Greek. Help me out. Who's the name of the Greek that came up with the four elements? He was before Aristotle. Aristotle was the one who, who, um, who embraced it. Uh, let's see. He believed all substances were made of small amounts of these four elements of matter. Most people followed Aristotle's idea, causing Democritus, the Democritus idea, which was that all substances on earth were made of small particles called atoms, atomos, Greek for little piece, okay? And <clears throat> Democritus was overlooked for 2,000 years. Finally, Democritus' idea that everything was made of small particles, as a matter of fact, we get the idea of, of, of the atom from Democritus, and the word atom comes from Democritus. But it wasn't Aristotle who came up with the came up with the idea of the four elements. Who's the Greek? The ancient Greek. He was an ancient Greek. It's, it's just the ancient Greek. They just said the ancient Greeks. The guy didn't really feel like doing any research, so he just wrote the ancient Greeks. They're like the ancient Everyone. Greeks. Really nice. Okay. Really nice. Just just put them all in one big basket. The ancient Greeks came up with Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, that was a musical group. What do we got? You got something? Yeah, what do you got? Me see? All right, we got something else. Hot off the press here. Oh! I did something. I did something. All right. It says... Oh, here it is! And, uh... F Empedocles? Empedocles? Empedocles. Who is that? Empedocles? Empedocles? Uh, Empedocles. So we have Democritus. We have Aristotle. How do you spell Aristotle? Is that right? Is that approximately correct? What is it? T-L-E. T L E. T O L E. What is it? S T O T L E. Yeah, okay. I know, being a little dyslexic is hard in spelling. I know how to spell something, but not when I want to write it on the board. Okay, now, <clears throat> this is the guy who came up with the four elements. This is the guy around the same time. Did anybody have dates when Democritus came up with the concept of the atom? I know you're shaking your head at Diva as if you're actually doing something. <laughs> I like that, okay? I like that. At least, at least, so he doesn't look like he's doing anything. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. That's honesty. I like that, Sudi. Very good. Excellent. Well done. Yes, exactly. Anybody? When did, when, 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 are there any dates here for Aristotle, Democritus, and Pericles? When was Aristotle born? Yeah, you got any dates. Come on, dude. You know, you got dates. Here, you got any dates on that? No, no, no dates. Anyway, so as you're looking for dates, I'll tell you a little story. So, so Democritus comes up with this great idea about... It's 384 BC. Well, who, who's, you're just throwing I mean, numbers Aristotle at me. Aristotle was born in 384 BC. So Aristotle was born here. Just BC, sir. Yes, I know, but before Common Era, E R A. Oh, I did that. Doesn't matter. Democritus? He was born 460 BC. He was born 460 BC. Empedocles. So Democritus was born 460 BC. Aristotle was 384 BC. So Democritus predated Aristotle. He was actually dead by the time Aristotle came along, right? How about Empedocles? Empedocles was the guy who came up with it first, 495 BC? Yeah. So it was Empedocles who came up with Earth, Wind, and Fire, okay, the musical group. No. Uh, what is it called? Earth, Wind, Earth, Wind, Fire, and Water, okay? And Aristotle. And then you had Democritus who came up with the idea that everything was made of small particles called atoms. 
Aristotle said, this guy's wrong, this guy's right, had this enormous following. Do you know how enormous the following was? Do you know who Aristotle's teacher was? Socrates. Who? Pluto. Pluto. You say Pluto? Yeah, yeah Pluto. So Aristotle was big. Seriously? Aristotle was big. Pluto or Plato? Plato? Yeah, not Pluto. Pluto can I. What did you say? Pluto or Plato? Plato. Pluto. Did I say Pluto? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Pluto, the planet Pluto. All right, so Plato uh, was teacher. Now, Aristotle was so off. This is what Aristotle actually thought. Are you ready? Yeah. Here's Earth, right? There's Earth. Next. This is the sky, right? Earth centered universe. And that there are angels or some kind of being that are, that this, this, and the heavens are actually, is a giant glass sphere. And this glass sphere is being rotated by angels or supreme beings. Just giving you the news, dude, okay? Just telling you the news. So that is what Aristotle's ideas led to. The concept of the, of the church at that time that really controlled Western civilization, that you had the Earth-centered universe, and you had the sphere, these glass spheres that rotated, that were rotated by angels. Yeah? The Greeks may have been the fathers of democracy, but they were not the fathers of science. Matter of fact, the Arab and Muslim cultures preserved much of the science that was going to be discovered later on when the Christians took over all of Spain and found all the thousands of libraries in southern Spain and translated all of the literature into uh, English and from uh, and Latin from Arabic the Jewish and Muslim scholars did all the translations and that information made its way to Western Europe and that information I think Toledo fell in like the 10th century, 11th century, there around, and that was where a lot of the material was found. And you know that was uh, Islamic Spain. Islamic Spain was like 7th and 10th century, 17th, 7th century to the 14th century. Granada fell in 1490-ish, 1492. And uh, that information in, from Toledo is the information that caused the Renaissance. Do you ever hear the Renaissance? Yeah. That was the information. So it was the Muslim culture that preserved the knowledge that led to the Renaissance. So, uh, amazing stuff. If it wasn't for Aristotle, you know, I'd be Captain Kirk and this would be the, you would be the crew of the Starship Enterprise, man, because we would be so far ahead in our understanding of science and technology that, uh, uh, you know, a, an iPhone 10 would be collecting dust in a museum somewhere in uh, Taka, you know, and we would be way ahead of that. So that is, uh, that was the timeline of the early Greek philosophers and their ability to completely, you know, screw up science. You know, you know, the Greeks were great people. They, they really had the right idea. Democracy was a tremendous uh, asset to uh, mankind. But let me tell you, when it came to science, they just did not get it right. Okay? So, is it time? All right? More than time. Have a great day. Introduction to whatever the title of the chapter is, part one. Have a great day.